All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Extra Data Point, the review channel that does things a little bit differently and fills in the gaps that the others have left out. As the uh, more astute of you may have noticed, I'm out in the elements with the uh, K3 Mark III and DFA 150 to 450 from Pentax. And this is my introduction to the next installment of weather sealing tests that I do on Pentax cameras. If you missed the first one, I buried a K70 in the snow for a little bit after uh, getting it a bit wet. And then I uh, did the same with this big guy to make sure it could, uh, well, come out here and, uh, you know, be with me in this uh, kind of weather. You know, it's, um, it's a little moist, but we could use the moisture. Anyway, uh, Enjoy this footage I shot from two years ago when the camera was new to me. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments and if you've got any questions about this camera system. Thanks for watching. All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Extra Data Point. Today I am going to do an unscripted ramble and weather sealing test on the Pentax K3 Mark III. I'm going to trail on about what I like. Uh, I'm gonna nitpick it and then of course we'll see it holds up to the legendary Pentax weather sealing standards. So things I like, ergonomics. Feels super good in the hands. Um, wear a size large glove just for reference. Uh, but like it, the contour here, the way that they shape the body of the camera. Um, I recently held a Sony A7, whichever generation, and it felt like a brick compared to this. Uh, everything's in really good places. They really spent a lot of time fine tuning this and it shows. Um, you can work everything that you need to while you're shooting with one hand, which I appreciate. And, you know, just overall like button layout, dial layout, everything feels really nice. Uh, the autofocus, it's better. Uh, relative to some of the mirrorless cameras that are out there right now, it's probably not going to stack up. That's just the nature of DSLR cameras. But relative to the K3 and the K70, I think it's better. I'm um, getting a better hit rate with it. I am observing that it is hunting less, uh, which I also appreciate. And overall, it just seems to be a little bit more accurate and snappy. Other things I like, um, overall build quality, you know, feels super solid, no surprises there. Uh, the viewfinder, huge and beautiful, definitely better than these two, uh, comparing them all side by side. But then also relative to like other viewfinders that I've tried, like even going back to like old film bodies, like the Minolta SRT 101 has a huge viewfinder in it. And I like this one more. Um, it's super crystal clear. It's really nice to look through. This camera is an absolute joy to use. Um, some of the things I don't love, um, I don't get why it's brassing already. Uh, I got this used with like less than 4,000 actuations on it and it's a little scuffed up already, which like, I don't care that much. I mean, like my K3 is dinged up. It's brassed. Um, no surprises there. I mean, like I, drop this thing on pavement once even um but for like 2013 versus 2021 i would have expected this to have lasted a little bit longer uh, another thing and this is also in the durability category uh this eyepiece is like really soft and it's comfortable and i like it except i'm worried that it's going to tear like especially when i'm hitting uh our playback button uh with gloves on or as I'm, you know, trekking through the woods or something. A little worried that this might snag and rip. But again, that's nothing new to uh, rubber eyepieces. Uh, another thing I didn't love about the K3 was Mark III was the strap that came with it. Again, this is like such a nitpick, but like, yeah, it's rubberized. Yeah, it's nice and embroidered. But like, it just doesn't feel like a strap that would have come with a camera at this price point. Like maybe the K70, sure, but like Pentax, do better. All right, let's talk about the main event, the weather sealing test. Uh, how is this camera weather sealed? 
Uh, in typical Pentax fashion, um, just yes, it's all weather sealed. Your buttons, your dials, your knobs, your levers, your uh, bells, your whistles, your kitchen sinks, uh, it's all weather sealed. Um, under our SD card door, we've got a little bit of a ridge here, which helps seal up against that nice rubber seal there. The port for your remote shutter is a nice big rubber piece that is tethered in. Underneath the camera, we can open up the battery door and see our seal around that, and then it locks into place. So that's, as it's jostling around, it's definitely not gonna get bumped open. The cover for the uh, contacts for the battery grip, um, not gonna pull that one off. It's on there super tight. The other side of the camera, we've got our headphone and our microphone jack, uh, really nice and thick seal there. And then same goes for our USB and our HDMI. Um, so yeah, really like to see it. Um, and of course, everything else, as mentioned, sealed in. The lens that I'm going to attach for this weather sealing test is the DFA. 150 to 450 F whatever. Uh, if this is a lens that you're researching, you probably know the specs already. Um, I do need to nitpick this lens really quick while I've got it here. Um, this is a really expensive lens and this brassing is crazy. Uh, and it wore off the uh, 150 marking for my focal length, which is like fine, like whatever, I don't need it. But when just about everything else is etched and engraved on this lens, it seems really strange that these markings were not. Uh, part of this is just operator. Uh, I wouldn't say operator error, but maybe my use case. Um, when I carry the, the lens, I have it attached to a strap on here and it's dangling against the side of my body. So it's rubbing up against whatever I'm wearing. So some of that is on me, uh, you know, I'll own that, but it just seems really strange that that's not engraved in. But, you know, we've got that big red seal uh, that we love to see. And of course, like the K3 Mark III, this lens is fully weather sealed as well. So our switches, our buttons, uh, moving parts for the zoom assembly and the focus ring, it's all weather sealed. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these paired up and let's get this weather sealing test started. Uh, folks, don't try this at home unless you're nuts like me. But, you know, I mean, I did get this used, but I want to make sure it's clean. Uh, both, both the lens and the body I got used. But, uh, yeah, it's nice and clean and ready for the weather sealing test outside. All right, everybody, uh, welcome back uh, to part two of Pentax K3 Mark III and DA 150 to 450 weather sealing test. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I ran it through the shower just because I was excited. I actually wanted to use the camera before putting it through its weather sealing paces. Uh, so you might notice it's a little bit all wet already. This is actually my second take on this video because I got it wrong the first time. But, uh, you know, just for the sake of being thorough and repeating our K70 test, we'll just get that nice and wet. And uh, let's turn on our outdoor view settings so you can actually see what's happening. And let's take some shots here. So there we go. It is a functioning camera. I'm going to go ahead and power it off. And uh, someone in the last video uh, called me out on uh, putting the lens cap on during the test and doing it to protect the glass, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, um, now that we've got it nice and wet, we can pull it off the tripod. And just like last time, there you go. Let's just, yep, okay. And we're just gonna let this marinate in the snow for a bit, and we'll check on it later. <clears throat> All right, so confession time. Uh, when I did the weather sealing test on the K70, that's a camera that I've had for a couple of years, and it's pretty easy 
to replace on the used market and uh, relatively inexpensive compared to what I'm now testing today. So I'm wimping out. I know you expected a full weather sealing test for a full 24 hours like we had done with the K70, but I honestly, I can't bear to do it. I can't. Uh, this camera's too new to me and I like it too much to completely torture it to death. So, sorry for the jump cut. Um, needed two hands to get it onto the tripod. Uh, anyway, I mean, it's been in the snow for an hour. Still nice and wet when it went in. I mean, it, it's Pentax. You know the weather ceiling is good, really. I mean, this is just for, I don't know, proof, pudding, whatever. I mean, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, it freaking love these cameras. And let's not knock the tripod over. And I guess I'm going to bring it back inside. I'm going to let it dry off. And then I'm just going to share some other random things. Uh, that I've observed and other just little clips that I've been putting together for some kind of review video. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And yeah. So I think one of the more important things about a camera that's going to go out into the elements is can it be used with bulky gloves on? Uh, you know, like thin gloves, fine, whatever. Uh, I'm sure they will work fine, but you know, big chunky gloves. Um, when it's really nice and below zero. Uh, so I'm just gonna check a couple things here and see what we can do. So I've got the camera switched on. Looks like I'm able to brighten it up there. Dials, I mean, like it's numb, like these are not nice gloves, um, but you know, I'm able to manipulate it, hit the shutter just fine, or other function dial here, excellent. Ugh, can kind of hit the, uh, view button there uh, yeah so I mean like it that's one of the things that I really appreciate about this is it seems like pretty much everything can be used with gloves on to some extent um, which is nice and again you know like these are not high precision gloves by any stretch but it seems like we're able to work the camera just fine so Cool. All right. So, um, yeah, if you're wondering about gloves, there you go.